Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts with a brief one. I have a few more between tonight and tomorrow. But for right now, we're going to deal with the sacrifice, a holy sacrifice. Hmm. You're wondering, what are we sacrificing, eh? Here we go. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, 2, and 9. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, the least you can do. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Verse 9. Love, let love be without dissimulation. I want to make sure I quote that correctly. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know what's good and what's evil, even though this world would like to say good is evil and evil is good. So they can see words on the billboard that say F-U-C-K, but they don't want to see anything up there that says anything about G-O-D. Yeah, so I say this to say, I said that to say this. Listen, you guys, we have to operate in love. When you love somebody, you don't want to see them hurt. There are people who want to see you hurt. There are people who would beat you down in a New York minute and would go and have lunch over your beaten up body. Think nothing of it. That is not of God. And sometimes people wonder, well, why does God allow things like that to happen? The one gift he gave us was free will, which means we're even free to mistreat each other. Now, whatever you do to another human being, it comes from your heart. Even what you say to them, out of the mouth, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So when you know that evil things are coming out of your mouth, hateful phrases are coming out of your mouth, trust me, that hate is in your heart. And <clears throat> what God wants you to do he said he wanted me to do it. I, I do it all the time. Present your body. That includes your mouth, your attitude, your thinking processes. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, which means you give it up. Here's a quarter. Here's my hand. I give it up. I let it go. God wants you to let hate go. He wants you to let cruelty go. He wants you to let uh, abrasive words go, hurtful words, things that you say and do to hurt another person intentionally. He wants you to relinquish the right to do that. Your right is in your choice. It's not that it's right to do, but your human right is in your choice. And your human right to making choices unfortunately in the wrong hands, causes people to make life a living hell for many others. If you are making life a living hell, if you're a husband beating your, your wife down, if you're a mother beating your children down, talking about them like they're worthless, telling them they should never have been born, why don't they just drop dead and make your life easier? Women beating down and putting down men. You're not even a man. I don't know why I wasted my time marrying you. You know, or men abusing their children, sexually abusing their children. You know what's sad about all that? There are too many people in this world that find that entertaining and funny. They will laugh if they see someone crying, pleading, and begging to be left alone. They think it's funny. Well, let me tell you about those people 
who think it's funny. There is something sick in the heart. You know, I don't care who you are. I don't care how abusive and mean you can be. You know, deep down in your heart, it's wrong. But you play it off, you laugh it off, you clown it away. Because you don't want to admit to what you're doing. You don't want to take responsibility. So you put the blame on her. You put the blame on them. If society hadn't, I wouldn't be like this. No, baby. Your hatred is your choice. Your abuse is your choice. The rapings, that's your choice. The beatings and the 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 molestations and and I mean that's your choice. It is your choice. You aren't knocked out of control. You're very much in control. You could just as easily turn away and walk out of the house and give yourself a good job to work out that anger and pray that God take the anger out, which he can do at the drop of a hat. In a New York minute, he can take your anger out. He can remove your rage. But because you'd rather enjoy hurting someone else so that you can justify how lousy you feel inside. If you're hurting someone else, it takes your focus off of how badly you're feeling about yourself. It gives you a sense of power, control. I have no idea why that satisfies you. But I do want to say this, and it may be offensive. That means that you are sin sick. And you need a healer. You need a deliverer to show you how he loves, so that you, in turn, after presenting your body as a living sacrifice, can learn true love, true kindness, true patience. Do you understand what I'm saying? Real acceptance, not mere tolerance. True, real acceptance. Love. Love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love doesn't put them up on a billboard and announce them to the public. You mothers that get on the phone and talk about your husband's nasty habits and your children's nasty habits. That's not love. Love covers that stuff. You don't want people knowing about that when you truly love. Unless you are sin sick. And if you're sin sick, you don't handle it under the uh, under the unction of love, you handle it under the unction of rage and anger and self-pity. If you are in a situation, excuse me, if you are in a situation where you have a dialogue going and you and the other person are disagreeing on almost every point, why would you tell them they're stupid? Why would you tell them they don't have the sense of a cockroach? Why would you put them down in public? Why would you make little of them and laugh and scorn and, and, and jeer at them? Why would you do that? That means that you do not have the ability or the humility to acknowledge another person's opinion and or voice your own with intelligence and poise. When you don't have that, all you know how to do when you're backed up against the corner and people are listening to you lose an argument is cuss them out, put them down, make fun of them. Well, that's from your own insecurities. It's another form of sin sickness. And then you get to blowing off at the mouth and you're cussing them out, you're putting them down... Bah, 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 bah. And you can't shut up. Now you got diarrhea of the mouth. And you don't realize the only one looking like a fool is you. 
you're trying so desperately to save your pride at someone else's expense. That is not love. Anyway, I'm not going to talk long because I know sometimes when we hear stuff like that, it goes in one ear and it comes out the other because we don't want to hear it. Well, for those of you who do want to hear it, go to God with those areas of dysfunction in your personality, in your character. Go to God. He's the only one who can heal all that. One time I was going off and I was throwing stuff and I had been saved maybe about three months. So you know curse words were right there at the forefront of my mind. And I let them fly out of my mouth. And I'm just a cursing and throwing and hollering and having a big old hissy fit. A grown-up temper tantrum. That's basically what that was. Now, I sat down, had me a good little cry. <clears throat> nice little self-pity cry. And when I and while I'm crying, <clears throat> it dawned on me to ask God a question. First I said, Oh, I'm sorry I went off like that. It's old habits. Please help me, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, Lord. Why do I go off like that? I've been doing it all my life. You know, God spoke to me and it shocked me because I didn't know it was that bad. God said one word, rage, R-A-G-E, rage. And I looked up toward the heavens and said, Lord, am I that angry? At that point, I said, Lord, whatever got me to this point, take it out. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to cause anybody any harm inadvertently. I don't want to hurt anybody's spirit or crush anybody's spirit with my mouth, with my anger, with my rage. Take it out of me. And Lord, please help me heal because I am a mess. That's when you start to get the help. The healing process was slow and deliberate, but God began to heal me. He enabled me within months and a few years to forgive. He enabled me to release my anger anytime I felt it boiling up like a volcano getting ready to erupt. I would immediately get in the habit of saying, Lord, take the anger out. You know I want to go off, but I don't want to. Take the anger out. And I would literally feel, just as it bubbled up, I would feel it going right back down. <sighs> Gone. Nothing but peace. God can help you. He's not going to tell you, don't go, you know, don't let the sun fall on your wrath. He's not going to say that and then not give you the ability. Do you hear what I'm saying? If someone tells me to turn the light on, I know that all I have to do is go to the wall and flip the switch. I have the power. I have the ability to turn the light on. Well, God gives us the ability to turn the hate off. He gives us the ability to turn the rage out, to get rid of it, to chuck it, trash it. He gives us the ability, but we have to want to change. And that is where the sacrifice lies. That's what the Bible means when it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. It's equivalent to Jesus saying, die to yourself. Well, and that is how we get the abundant life, full of joy, full of love, full of goodness, kindness, patience, sweetness, acceptance, self-control. And you have to remember to ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. That's where the new nature and the new heart comes. You get a heart and a mind transformation. And the Bible washes your mind. I'm telling you, I am telling you, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think, 
according to the power that works in you. God bless you.